Hello guys, this is Paul McWhorter from TopTechBoy.com and we are here today with lesson number 34 in our legendary new and improved Arduino tutorial series. And what we're going to learn today is we're going to learn a quick hack that will allow you to put a button, a push button, into an Arduino project the simplest possible way. In videos 27, 28, and 29 in this series, I talked to you about using a push button and showed you the old school theory about you know having to put in an external pull-up resistor connect, or connected to 5 volts or a pull-down resistor connected to ground and how to do it. Did some projects, got it all working, but I'm going to show you a quick and dirty way to do that same thing without having to use any external resistors and let's move me out of the way and so for this project you will need your push button from your handy eLego super starter kit okay if you don't have one yet click the uh, link down in the description 35 bucks you get all the parts that we use in this series also of course you will need some copy Ice coffee towards the end of the day, it is gone. So my video making will come to an end today because I am out of coffee. Coffee is the elixir that fuels this creative genius that you know as toptechboy.com. All right, so to do this switch, uh, let me zoom in some. And then of course we are going to have to wait for this thing to focus which it takes a little while, but I got a new document camera and the problem is it takes a little while to focus, but it does give a much better image than my old one. All right, <clears throat> hooking this thing up, I'm gonna show you how to do this without having to use any external pull up or pull down resistors. The main thing on this switch is, do you see these leads that are pointing towards each other? It's like they're curved towards each other. Those leads that are curved towards each other are already hooked together, so they need to go in a common column because the columns are hooked together. So if you put those that are curved together in a common column, then these other pins and the, these these eLego uh, switches fit into a breadboard better than most, but they still require a little bit of fussing with them to get them to go. All right, so I now have the switch in there and the push button, and I will come from one pin, all right, and I will go to pin two. I cannot, I, I am going to zoom out a little bit so you can see both things that I am doing. We will allow it to focus and I lied. I've got to zoom out a little bit more. Okay. If I had a producer, you know, this would be so much easier, but it is just me working here. Okay, so you can see that I go from one leg of the switch to pin two, and then of course the other leg of the button, we will go to ground. All right, no magic, no pull up, no pull down resistor. Okay, this is the way that you make it work in the code. So let me come over here to the code view, which I think, uh, let's see. No, that's not very, that's, that's kind of a lame shot there. Let me come to this one. Okay. Yeah, I really don't like that one either. Let me come to this one. All right. This is a great view. <clears throat> and if I had been more professional, I would have taken out this nonsense before and start with an empty one. Okay, but you can kind of figure out I practice this before I do the video, so I've already written the program once. So how do we use this button as a push button on our project? Well, what we start with is I need that thing to go down in there. I think I am sorry. I've got to get these pins where it goes down in there really good, or I'm going to drive myself crazy. 
fearing that it is not going to work. So let me get that plugged in where it really stays all the way down there. Ah, that is in there good now. Okay, so what do we need for a push button? Well, we need a we need a int, and let's just call it butt pin. pin. No, let's call it button button pin. And that is in where? That's in pin two, as we said. Then let's go int. And then I'm going to need a button value. Button value. And I'm not going to put anything in there because that is uh, going to be what I'm going to read. Now, this is where the magic is going to happen. I am going to do a pin mode, pin mode of button pin. And I'm going to do, as you could imagine, input. No surprises there, right? No surprises there because I'm going to be reading from it. Here is where the magic happens. Digital write. Okay. I am writing to an input pin. What kind of insanity is that? <clears throat> so I'm going to digital write to a button pin. And what am I going to make it? Hi. So think about what this is doing. Doing the pin motive as an input, I'm bringing internally on that chip. I'm bringing internally into the circuit a pull-up resistor. And so the pull-up resistor is there because I declared it as an input. And then if I write that input pin high, that connects it to 5 volts. And so now I have like a pull-up situation where it should, in its nominal state, be sitting there reading a 1. And then when I press the button, that'll connect it directly to ground and I'll read a zero. So I will have a very, very stable operation by taking advantage of the internal pull-up resistor and not having to furnish one myself if all goes according to plan. So I do a digital write button pin high. Now what do I do? I do a uh, into button value. I will do a digi digital read of what I'm going to read from a button pin as such. And then I'm going to do a serial.println. And what I'm, I like to put a little formatting. So I'm going to say, in quotes makes it a string, <coughs> your button is like that. And now I will do a serial dot print ln print ln and then I will print button <clears throat> value which I just read. Okay. And then let's put a little bit of a delay in there. Delay uh, DT for delay time. I will have to come back up here and declare that. Int delay time equals 100 milliseconds. I like that. All right, let's uh, <clears throat> download this and then let's see what happens. Hold your breath. Oh my goodness, used a colon instead of a semicolon. Hopefully you were yelling at me. All right, hold your breath. Mm. Boom, it downloaded. Okay, downloaded, but we don't know if it worked. So we need to go to a slightly different view here. Is this a good view? I ah, need to open the serial monitor so you can see it. Okay. Ah, what is wrong? What did we forget? We forgot to do our serial.begin9600. All right, so here we are going to download, this time with the serial monitor turned on. Okay, it looks like it downloaded. Look at that button is one. Why? Because the button is not pressed. I will get out of your way a little bit more here. The button is not pressed. Now I'm going to put my little finger down there and press the button. Boom! Look at that. Look at that. Do you see anything indicating non-stable operation? 
we have just made a push button without having to plug a resistor into the circuit and it's working very very simply all right guys i like using buttons but they're a small part of a much bigger project and the thing that just kind of annoys me is having to get slowed down by adding that resistor and messing everything up and so this to me is a really big deal to be able to come in and get a button in without having to put a resistor and just doing this this wacky little thing of writing to an input pin all right guys this has been a quick lesson <clears throat> Would love to hear from you guys down below in the comments. Think about giving us a thumbs up. Think about subscribing to the channel. And I'm not going to give you a secret word this time because I figure people could actually make it through this video because it was just a couple of minutes long. Okay, Paul McWhorter from TopTechBoy.com. I will talk to you guys later.